at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, May 20th, 2020, calling the Lakeville Board of Health meeting to order. Is there anyone recording this other than Lake Cam? I hear no one. This is Derek Maxim, Chairman of the Lakeville Board of Health. Permit me to confirm that all members, staff, and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Bob Lucci? Present. Chris Spratt? Present. Edward Cullen? Present. Zenith uh, Consulting Engineers? Present. Outback Engineering? Present. Okay, that should be everybody in on the meeting. This is, this open meeting of the Lakeville Board of Health is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of COVID-19. The order, which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so as long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure pub public participation unless participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public participation. For this meeting, the Lakeville Board of Health is convening by video conference via Zoom as posted on the town's website. First on the agenda, 13 South Ave, meet with Zenith Consulting Engineers to discuss local upgrade approval. I will turn it over to Zenith. Right, Will Connolly, Zenith Consulting Engineers for the record. Um, we're proposing a repair to an existing failed septic system. Um, as you can see here, the entirety of the site is within the 100 foot buffer um, of a surface water supply. Um, so what we're proposing is a 2000 gallon tight tank. Um, we're pretty limited as far as setbacks go. So um, we have um, <coughs> most, most of the work outside the 50 foot buffer. Um, we're proposing a ballast on top of the tight tank in order to keep it as high as possible um, out of the water table um, in order to reduce the cover over the tank for buoyancy. Um, we're also proposing silt sock um, on the side of the building in order to prevent erosion. And yeah, we feel this is pretty much the best option. So if there's any questions, I can answer them now. Okay, thank you. Um, you're just asking for two variances, one from the water setback and one to the groundwater table in inlet of the tank. Um, I discussed earlier with Zenith on one and to see if we could raise it any higher than where it is and um, they explain this is the highest they can keep it with a, the concrete on the top and the nine inch minimum cover for the existing contours of the lawn uh, because they're not allowed to fill because uh, they're in the floodplain. So they, they can't fill in the, they can't bring the tank up any higher and fill the front yard. It has to stay where it is. Um, Bob, do you have any questions on this one? No, I mean, I think it's the only solution is a tight tank. There's really nothing else they can do in there. So uh, it's probably the best solution that there is. Right. A question for you, Will. Um, they, they do own that piece across the street. Is that their well across the street in that shed? Is that part of the property? Yeah, you can actually see the water line runs um, from that property across the street. So that's um, part of the same property? Um, I believe so. I know it's the same owner. Okay. But again, there's, there's wetlands on the back side of that, which go right to the pond also. So. Right. Um, they, they would have to almost lose that garage to do anything across the street there. If, if they chose to at some point. 
This is a uh, year-round property. I believe that's a year-round well. This is um, yes, I believe so. Okay. Chris, do you have any questions? No. Um, yeah, it's there's not a lot of options. You know, it's this or probably a really expensive, you know, innovative and alternative. Um, and I'm not going to go into like the whole neighborhood and how it <laughs> it all evolved, but yeah, I don't see any other options. And um, yeah, so there's not much I get to say on it. Okay, Edward, do you have any comment? I, I'd read your comments earlier on it. Anything to add to it? Yeah, like I said, I th well, the Titanic's an improvement on the existing field, which is clearly in the water table. So um, you know, there'll be an improvement in in the uh, the from the pond's perspective um uh and I, I agree with what you said derek about trying to raise it um the only thing i would add if they're going to keep it out there is to try to make the seal around the riser and where you have the conduit for the alarm don't put that right at the top of tank put it a little higher because that's often a, um a, a potential for leaking into the tank because like you said the Top of the tank is 21 inches below grade, and weeping was at 20 inches. So it's going to be weeping on top of the tank. Just, just so sealing around that riser, and where you poke the riser out of poke the conduit out of the riser, make sure those seals are good, um, so there is no leakage into the tank. Yeah, and I think uh, Niles had mentioned that um, they'll try to poke it through as high as possible to keep it out of that water table. Okay. Yeah, and when I had talked to Niles earlier, they want to make sure that center cover of the tank is sealed completely before the concrete is poured over the top. So it doesn't come in between the two pieces and leak into that tank. Um, so that's just something you gotta look for, uh, Ed. Okay. We do inspections on this. Um, just make sure that center cover is completely sealed down before they pour the concrete on it. Okay. Um, and then the other question I guess I had, Will, seeing we're pouring concrete on it, um, you, you don't want to bring up that other cover to grade. I see we only have one cover to grade. Uh, um, they, they don't ever want to get to the other end of that inlet, the outlet tank. Would that be a concern to you? Or are you just trying to keep everything sealed so there's only one riser to grade to get flat water in? Um, yeah, I think that was the idea is to just keep it as, as watertight as possible um, with the one cover to grade. Okay. I'm fine with that. Um, I don't have any other comments, everybody. I had one more was just um, to make the, the owners aware that, um, you know, we have annual inspection for these tight tanks and um, just know that they're going to have, you know, pump a schedule and inspection to make sure it's still watertight and it's not leaking and all that, all that fun stuff, just so they were aware of it. Aware of it. Okay. Good point, Chris. You guys ready? Yep. I'll make a motion that we approve the two state variances on 13 South Ave Lakeville. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Bob Pellucci? Aye. Chris Pratt? Aye. Derek Maxim? Aye. Thank you, Will. All right, thanks. Thanks, Will. Okay, next on the agenda, 15 Fuller Shores Road, meet with Outback Engineering to discuss local upgrade requests. Hi, Kyle Devonish from Outback Engineering. Uh, we're on 15 Fuller Shores, uh, pretty much right across from the beach access on to Long Pond. Um, upgrade of an existing failed system. Uh, we are, because of well radii on the site, uh, from the abutters, we we did our best to keep it out of there. Um, because of that, we're up towards the front of the lot, which is about 200 feet 
from the surface water supply. So that's our first waiver. Oh, sorry, local upgrade approval. Um, and then there's also, as you can see in the hatched road area where that benchmark label is, there's a catch basin that drains directly to the surface water supply. And because of where the tank is, the existing tank is, and where the pump tank would have to be, um, the furthest we could get it would, was about 13, 20, 12 and 12.8 feet, almost 13. Um, so we, were, we squeezed it in there as much as possible, trying to keep it away from the abutters wells was pretty much number, uh, number one if we could. Um, so then we also have a, we grabbed a sieve sample because it was so wet. Uh, then we, because where the water table is, we need the separation between the inlet and outlet to the, to the water table. And then we, because of the tight location between the driveway tank and existing field, which is half in the grass area, half under the driveway, which is currently in the groundwater. Um, we had just had to do one test bit and that's about it. The, the invert comes out underneath the garage. Um, there's a step up in the garage slab in the back. So that's where it comes out. Um, and then the, there's a crawl space underneath the rest of the house. That's about it. I tried to squeeze it in there without too much disturbance everywhere else. Okay, thank you. I got a, a couple questions. Uh, yes. Stuff. Uh, Kyle. On the existing 300 gallon tank, Yep. Um, it doesn't appear that it was a two component. Um, I am, I didn't see it. Um, I see that it's not labeled. I just have 1500 gallon tank. Um, where we also have a note on there to I think check the, uh, condition of the tank. So it might have to come out anyway All at right. time of construction. Well, even, uh, our regs require a two compartment also. And if okay. it's two compartment, I think that would be the, the first one. And then it's older than 20 years, which our regs say any tank older than 20 years must be replaced. A local, yep. So you can confirm that tank was, that's the original tank from 97? I do believe so. Okay. Um, and then secondly, on the pump tank. Yep. Um, you've seen it's in the water table and you don't even have the separation um, where the boots are. We normally require an H20 monolithic tank. Okay. To make sure they don't leak um, and there's no seam. Yep. And that's something we, we have been doing. Uh, I don't know. We can talk with Bob and Chris and see if they still feel the same on that. But I would like to see an H20 monolithic. Okay. Um, and then we designed it for, what is the perk rate? Less than two? Is that why we had to go to the five feet separation for the sieve? Is that what it came up to? Yeah, it came out to like 85% sand, so. Okay. And there's nothing we can do with that separation because of the setback to the water. Yep, we can't. Yeah, can't ask for both. So. Can't ask for both. So it, it, it's really high out of the ground out there. I mean, you're talking almost six feet. Yeah. It. Uh, with that catch uh, base, top of the system. Yep. And I mean, if you if you want to pan down to the plan view, um, we are thinking when when I was out there doing the park, um, the homeowner had asked about extending it, see where the patio is labeled. Yeah. Um, but just with the house and the property line and the wells, um, we couldn't really fit it in there and would be running out towards the front and then coming back with the tanks. Okay. <clears throat> and, and the homeowner is aware of, of how high this is going to be out of the ground. I mean, we're talking six feet. If it's going to be over everybody's head, just standing at the road. I mean, feet from it. Yeah, we, uh, Tom has been in discussion with him, Tom at our office. Um, and we really, we wanted to keep it out of those well, um, radii and 
it is about six feet high, so he is aware of that, yes. Yeah. Did you look at doing a bottomless sand filter? It seems like that would be the ideal place for one. Um, I'm not sure. I'm sure they looked at it, but I'm not, I don't know about how in-depth they looked at it. And now... That'll help you get further away from that catch basin too. I was I was kind of curious if the groundwater is leaching into that catch basin, because then you're gonna run into issues with that that system so close and the bottom of the system and the bottom of the barrier, the difference between where the water table is and and, and if the water is actually running into that catch basin, you can run into issues there too. And that bottom of the sand filter would be would solve a lot of problems. It's definitely something we can look at. Edward, any any input on that by any chance? On the sand filter or on the um on just a system that that any ideas that we could get this a little lower and you know not six feet out of the ground right next to the road with a four sided well, wall. I mean you're talking about Yeah, there's not a lot you could like Kyle was saying, there's not a lot you can do being that close to the, the pond. Uh, I would suggest maybe a two tiered wall or something um, that's a little more innate where you know, the first tier, you got a garden or something, and, you know, you can have vines or something, you know, like the creeping ivy going over the wall, so it's kind of a little more decorative. Um, but like I said, it's... Try to ease the uh, step up. Right, so it'd be a two-step rather than just a full five and a half feet. You'd have like a two and a half and then a two and a half um, there, so it's, it's a little more decorative. You can even whatever put a seating thing in there or whatever. There, there, there are ways to make it a little more appealing if you're worried about the site. But like I said, he's, he's doing what he can to protect the, the pond itself by doing the five feet. Uh, and, the, and the liner usually goes two feet into the ground. Um, I believe that is a catch basin, but I don't believe it's a very deep catch basin. So um, although there may be some infiltration, as Chris was saying, it's not your typical four feet foot deep catch basin that you would see on the street. It's a, it's a lot shallower than that. So I think the liner will help prevent some of that um, effluent from getting into the there. Whereas if it's the liner goes two feet into the ground, that way it will, um, most of it will go down rather than out towards the catch basin. Uh, the water table is six tenths below the rim of that catch basin. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Um, I think Derek's breaking up. Derek, you there? Uh, yeah, I can't hear him either. Yeah. Um, Chris and Bob, uh, you, you do. You, what do you think about the sand filter? Are you okay with this one, or do you prefer the sand filter? Yes. I'd like to see an option at least because it'll be a smaller footprint. It won't be near as high. Um, it, it, I think it's just better all around. I've seen a few of them done and they make even down um, some of the other lake I agree they are nicer, but um, from the owner's perspective, they are more expensive quite a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Derek, if you can hear me, try moving your Wi-Fi router a little bit further away from your computer. It can cause distortion if it's too close. Which rooms? <laughs> yeah, you know, what we were really trying to do is optimize the space with being cost effective, obviously, but. Um, can you hear me now? Am I back? Yeah, yeah I can hear you. How about now? 
I it's better. It. I don't think you're back on you. Okay, I'm back. Yeah. Okay. Um, one other question, Kyle. Yep. On the Versalar block, um, it, it, if we go with this, is that going to be strong enough to hold that feet up? Um, the material, I mean, normally they use the bigger size block, but you're gone again, Derek. Yeah, you're coming up. Is that a small reverse block block? Um, Derek, you you're, going you're, you're, you're going in and out again, Derek. He was talking about the Versa lock block. I got that part of it here. Um, it yeah, I believe up. they have a six okay. foot max height. So I think that is rated for six feet. Okay. Can you hear me now? Still not great. Can not you so hear well. us? Yeah, I can hear you. I can see everything and hear everything. I'm going to call in now if you can hear me. Yep. Yeah, I can. Yeah, it can looks like you have the, phone? your phone's working. Derek, do you want to call in? I think he's setting up the audio for his phone now. Yeah, I have his phone Can video. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'm just going to go with my phone. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, I was just worried about that VersaLock block not holding it being that high. Um, I know above four feet, we've had discussions on other um, projects about having it structurally engineered. Is that a concern? Um, um, I believe this VersaLock are um, rated for up to six foot high wall. Okay. So, you can get a VersaLock to stamp it too if you want a structural engineer stamp on the okay. wall, if, it, if it's about four feet. Um, so yeah, we've done that before. Do, do we need to do that? Is that a requirement? I, mean, I, I don't want to add any more cost to this than what we would have to, but is, it, is that a requirement? I, I don't think that they've ever had to pay to get anything because they have, have a standard spec on all the blocks down there that say it. I know Larry used to ask everybody for them over four feet. And unless it was somebody going to build it themselves, the most manufacturers just printed them up something that showed that it, um, that it was rated for that height. Okay. Um, all right, so that was about all my concerns. I mean, again, it, it meets everything in Title V to allow this one to go in from, from I guess, my point of view. I, I don't like it. I don't like the height of it, but I don't know if, if we should just deny it. Just we don't like the height of it. I don't know if that, because it does meet everything they can do. Um, what what's your feeling, Bob? I mean, I'm the same. While well, you were breaking up, we talked for a second, and I and about the bottomless sand filter again, and they just said the cost was a big factor for uh, for considering that. Um, you know, it would be a lot lower. It would be a smaller footprint. It would get, you know, get away from everything a little bit more. But, um, you know, I think I guess it's really up to you guys. If I mean, I don't know what the cost difference is. How much more it is, I. I mean, I did one once. I didn't think it was that bad, but maybe it was. I don't really know. Well, I, I guess, too, you can mention it to the owner. It may cost more, but if, if he goes to sell it, the resale value of the home would, would probably make up for it. 
you know. Because yeah, it's definitely that. something I can mention to him because he was when I met with him. He uh, on site, he was definitely concerned about where it was and how high it was going to be. So, yeah, I'll, I'll mention that to him. Yeah, I don't know if you guys have done many of them, but there's been quite a few going in town the last few years, and um, you know, everywhere. Um, that I've seen them go in. I mean, when they're across the street from something like you're proposing, it's kind of like a no-brainer that the, uh, you know, I've had even some people say they wish they were around when they put theirs in. Yeah. So, I mean, it's something, I guess we could approve this the way it is, but, you know, ask them to at least look at it and consider it and get a price on it to see what the price breaks out. Because I think if the owner saw one, he'd hit, you know, instead of having that giant thing in his front yard, he might, he might feel it's worth the extra money to do it. Yeah, I can definitely ask. Uh, yeah, I believe the hearths over on on Edgewater, further down the other way, um, they have one, I believe. If okay. you want to drive by, you can't even see it <laughs> or even notice yeah. it. But. Yeah, and I put one. I put one in down at Pilgrim right there, and if all the houses around it have big four or five foot block walls taking up their whole front yards and this was just a small system in the backyard. I think it had two or three rows of timbers around it for the height, and, and that was it. I mean, it's a, a. I mean, I think in situations like this, again, I don't if it meets the laws and stuff. But I, I think if the guy looks at it, one, it's kind of a no-brainer. I got a question on the uh, bottom of sand. How does that get it lower to the water table, being with the variance to the pond to 400 to 200, or would it still be at five? Edward, do you know that one? It's just the treatment that it gets. You, you get a much better treatment um, from from the, the bottom of the sand filter that you don't need that same separation. So they would be allowed to, to go down to like three feet to the water on a bottom of sand, even with the variance of four to two on the pond? Yeah, I mean, you, you definitely get the reduction, like I said, it, and the, the amount of treatment they get from there, it's it's a lot better than just a natural gravity just going through the the what we have here. So, and I mean the the idea of the five foot separation is to get the extra treatment. So if you're getting that treatment elsewhere, um, you don't need the five feet basically. Okay, I think we had a couple before where they wanted the separation and they were in the buffers and they had to go to the IA in order to do it. Okay. I believe. Memory yeah. serves me correct. Yes, in Parkhurst. I think I know you're the one you're talking about. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, well, I mean, I guess I, I'd be okay with proving this. If, if that's the way they want to go, I'd just re really like to stress on the engineer what this is going to look like. And there is another option if, if they would like to do something different with a bottomless sand. Yeah. Um, we can definitely uh, t discuss it with the owner and see what see what they think. And uh, okay, yeah, because I mean we'd like to make it look as good as possible as well. We don't want something sticking up out of the ground as much as as possible. Oh, you know? It had dropped down three or four feet. It would look a lot better. It, you almost might be able to eliminate the pump, right? Or no? No, you still, uh, uh, still, still need it. Yeah, you only got a foot between the, the outlet and the water table, so you, you'd still have a pump. Okay. I think the bottomless sand has to have a pump anyway. I think it's pressure dowsing. It is. Yeah, yes. they, go, oh, they yeah. go up on the top, yep. All right. Well, you want me to run this the way it is and, and just hope they take a look at it and come to their senses? Yeah, we just have to uh, make the comment of the 1,500-gallon tank would need to be replaced with a two-compartment. Yep, in an uh, H20 model with the yeah, yep. and an H monolithic pump tank. Yeah, and, and septic tank. Yeah, and septic tank because they're both in the water. So we want monolithic H20 on both. Okay, two compartment H20 and pump chamber H20 monolithic. Yeah. All right. All right. I'll make a motion that we approve the five local upgrade requests for. Um, I'm reading this paper. 15 Fuller Shores Road, um, 
subject to a two compartment H20 septic tank, um, an H20 um, monolithic tank on that, an H20 monolithic pump chamber, and, um, and um, some type of engineering spec to uh, show that the proposed um, block wall uh, can go that height. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Paul Pellucci? Aye. Chris Spratt? Aye. Derek Maxim? Aye. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Have a good one. And maybe uh, on that, are you going to resubmit a new plan showing the two compartment tank on that? Kyle? Uh, how, do you, how do you want me to do that? Um, or do you want a new plan? I would prefer just so we have an actual plan that shows H20 tanks, shows yep. one lift, shows two compartment. Yep, that way everything's on one plan. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's missed in between and someone grabs this plan and doesn't catch it. Yep, exactly. I just want that one final plan. All right. Thank you. Thank, All right. thank you. Next on the agenda, approval of betterment loan. For the amount of nineteen thousand seven hundred and seventy-five dollars. Well, Sarah, she she typed these on the agenda for these amounts, but on the um like on the next one, eighty-six Taunton Street, the initial loan they have uh twenty-seven one seventy because I think they're uh putting a contingency on that. I believe we've been voting the amount with the contingencies if they need it so they don't have to come back to us. Okay. So is there a different number for 7 Cary Street or is that the correct one? That didn't print when I printed this package. I don't know. All I know is on the next one down, it's listed 25220. And, uh, uh, and on the uh, individual paper that we sign, if you look at that page, it says 27170 um, for the total loan. Okay, and I actually have the paper in front of me we signed. I have the packet, Bob. So okay. you're correct. So the paper we, they want us to sign for a seven Cary Street is correct with that amount, $19,775. Okay. That's the actual signing paper. Okay. Uh, Chris, do you have any comments on this one? No. Nope. Edward? Are you, nope. you good with Okay, I'm good with it, Bob. If you get that number, okay. I'll I'll make a motion. We approve a betterment loan for seven Cary Street for the amount of nineteen thousand seven hundred and seventy-five dollars. I can. Any discussion? All those in favor, Bob Pellucci. Aye. Chris Spratt. Aye. Derek Maxim. Aye. Okay, next on the agenda, another betterment program. Betterment loan for 86 Taunton Street. Now, do you guys agree it should be 27,170? I, I, 27,170, that is what's on the, uh, the printed up paper and that that's what, that we signed. Yeah, okay, so that's just an incorrect number on the agenda. Correct, I'm just adding up right now quickly in my head just to, Verify, give me one second. Correct, it does add to that number, Bob. 27,170. Okay. Chris, do you have any comments on this betterment? No. Edward, any? No comment. Okay, I I'm good with it, Bob. I'll make a motion that we approve a betterment loan for 86 Taunton Street and the amount of $27,170. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Bob Pellucci? Aye. Chris Spratt? Aye. Derek Maxim? Aye. Okay, that's it for the betterments. Next on the agenda, approve a new septage pumper license. Tokamak Environmental. Um, I don't believe they are here with us tonight. 
Edward, can you just uh, elaborate if they have everything we need to approve this for them? Yeah, they have all their paperwork. Um, yeah, I guess it's just your standard standard pumping. Um, okay, have they ever been licensed in town before? Is this a, the fir our new company? Do you have any idea on that one? I don't know on that. I don't know the history. I just assumed that uh, they were uh, first time, they, but they may have a history in the past. I, I didn't check into that. Yeah. I've never heard of them before. So in, in my 10 years, I, I don't think they've ever been in town. Okay. And um, what is it? Do you know, Edward, off the top of your head, what is the requirement when they pump? Um, when do they have to turn in the pumping records? Is it every 30 days? Do you know that by any chance? Yeah, I, I believe it's 30, yeah. Okay, so can we just make sure when they pick up their, their permits that they're I'm aware them. Okay. of their records within 30 days of pumping? Yep, we can we do that. Okay. I'm good with that. All right, I'll make a motion that we approve a new seepage pumper. That's supposed to be septic or seepage? Septage. Septage. Yeah, septage pumper license for Hockamark Environmental. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Bob Pellucci? Aye. 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 Derek Maxim? Aye. Next on the agenda. Clark's Catering LLC approved new food license establishment. Um, they're not here for that either, so we'll refer to Edward on that. Can you just give us the update and then see if they have everything we need to approve this one and where they're going to be located? So it's similar to the one we did last time when it's a truck, but I believe it's actually a trailer uh, rather than that. So he's a, he's a local catering company. But what he wants to do is he wants to sell out of his trailer. Um, I think he wants to park it at Mucky's uh, liquor store. Um, and that way when people go in, they can also get food as well. Uh, um, the, we haven't inspected it yet simply because it's not ready yet. Um, although he's got his paperwork and he's an established caterer, um, the actual trailer isn't ready for inspection just yet. So we haven't been able to do that yet. So if you do um, approve of it, it would be pending an inspection by the, um, uh, pending a, a restaurant inspection or a food, food service inspection. Okay, thank you. Now I know they've had catering services before at Mucky's. Is this obviously not the same one they've had there previously? This is a new, new one that's- I believe, I believe so. I, I, I don't know of the ones that were there before, so I can't speak to that. Okay. Bob, do you have any issue with this one? No, I'm fine. Chris? No, I'm good. Okay, yeah, I'm good. Uh, just an inspection from, uh, to approve. Okay. I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve a new food establishment license for Clark's Catering LLC, subject to a final inspection by our health agent. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Bob Pellucci? Aye. Chris Pratt? Aye. Derek Maxim? Aye. Okay, next, um, I believe, Bob, you, you had a comment on this one on the agenda. Uh, discuss, discuss golf ball easy lift. Um, yeah, I it might sound stupid, but I figured I'd give our golf courses a little coverage since the laws are pretty generic and they don't spell out a lot of things. There's a system that I know at least two of them have bought already, and um, I believe they fall under what the governor is allowed, because, even though, so that they can still hit in the hole, but with using their club, you just lift a lever and the ball pops back out of the hole. So no one's touching a flag, no one's touching the, the device. It's made for the golf club, the putter to stick in and lift it up. Um, you know, real golfers like it, they don't, I'm, I understand that they don't like just being able to have people shoot at hitting a rubber thing. Um, I felt it complied. I told them I thought that, but I was just going to bring it up to you guys to make sure you didn't disagree with me. Okay, Bob. Thank you. I see uh, Edward must have found found a picture of it online here. I don't know if you can see that. So now I actually know what they're talking about. Yeah. Uh, I believe the only thing is... Um, I'm fine with it. We're just going to make sure they don't take out that flat. 
<laughs> excuse me, take out the flat. Yeah, I think that's the whole reason for it is to eliminate all contact with it. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, uh, there's, I believe I believe they come with little flags that they that are taped onto the actual flags that tell you not to not to touch it. I mean, you can see in one of the top pictures, there's a lever that actually sticks out of it. So when you walk up to it, you know, and there'll be instructions, I'm sure, when they're going on the course. But, you know, no one's going to have to touch anything. You, you just pop it open with your putter, and then they can still hit in the hole. So, I, you know, they're not touching anything. I felt that was safe. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody's going to make some money. I think that one's <laughs> – Edward, do you have any input on this one before we – no, I agree with Bob. It's going to limit the amount of contact uh, the golfers have with the hole. Um, although the, they did come out with those regulations, um, they didn't. When they came out with the regulations, they weren't thinking of a flag like this. So when they said that they don't want any flags, it wasn't one where that you can also remove the ball. If they, if they knew that, they probably wouldn't have put that in the regulation. So I definitely think it's with the intent of the regulation. The intent of the regulation is not to touch the flags and not to touch the rakes. But like I said, as long as the flag remains there and no one's removing the flag, then this is better because like I said, you're not sticking your hand in that hole and that's going to prevent um, spread. So I, overall, I think it's a good thing. Okay, thank you, Edward. Uh, something we'd like to make a motion on, Bob, just to clarify, we, we approved it? Yeah, I'll just make a motion that uh, – that, uh, the Lakeville Board of Health agrees that the uh, easy lift uh, falls under the recommended guidelines for the golf courses in Lakeville. I'll second that. Any discussion? All those in favor? Bob Pellucci? Aye. Chris Pratt? Aye. Derek Maxim? Aye. Okay, thank you. Um, next. Uh, well, that's it under new business. Um, we'll go, actually we had one request uh, from Chris. His soil evaluator's license needs to be renewed. Um, he was asking if, if we need to approve the, the, the renewal fee to keep his soil evaluator's license current. Uh, are you okay with that, Bob? Yep. Yeah, we have to. We have to vote to approve the funds. So that that's actually something we have to vote on. Okay. Now, Chris probably would not Maybe be able to on the agenda, though. Yeah, it probably should be on. When's it due? Uh, it doesn't expire till July first. I just want to. I I figured I'd bring it up tonight. You know, I didn't know how we had to handle it. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've always done that for any of the um, board members or the agents. We cover all their continuing ed costs or anything that they uh, licenses they need that they use in, in the position. So I would have no problems with doing it. I, like you said, though, it probably should be, a, especially where we're allocating money, it probably should actually be an agenda item. Okay, right. I'm fine. I'll get the paperwork in and we can do it on the next meeting. That's fine. Yeah, have it all processed, and we can just sign it the next time. Maybe we're lucky we'll be in person next time. Yeah. I'm still for sitting in the parking lot with our chairs six feet apart. I know, right? Okay, we'll put that on for the next meeting for you, Chris. Thank you, guys. Uh, that's it. Can I'm I just say it. something, Derek? Yeah, we're going on to old business. Yep, whatever. It's just pending Board of Health items. So go ahead, yeah. Bob. Well, it's all part of this pandemic, so I guess it's covered. I mean, I just wanted to, uh, you know, the the 20 people that might be watching us, but um, a lot of our local, we all thought, at least I did, that the restaurants were going to get a little relief this week, and now it looks like they're still a month away. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I just like to ask people in the town, you know, if you're going to go buy a pizza, you know, we have three local places in town. Maybe you forgot about them because they've been, they've been there for so long. Uh, if you're going to go get a cup of coffee, uh, fill your gas tank up. If you can, uh, and maybe the one near your office is more convenient, but if you can take that extra minute or two, I just, you know, like to remind people, our local businesses are suffering. Most of the local businesses are all residents of the town that still have to pay their mortgages and their rent on those businesses. And they're uh, very limited at, 
of what they can sell. And, you know, most places make more money off alcohol than they do off the food. So even though they're open, if they're doing the takeout, and I'm not telling people to spend extra money. I know things are tight right now, but if you're going to go buy a pizza or you're going to go do something like that, get a cup of coffee, if you could, uh, I believe all the local businesses in the town would appreciate you thinking of them. That's okay, all. Bob, thank you. Chris, do you have anything under any pending items for the Board of Health you'd like to discuss? Um, nothing new. I mean, are we going to talk about the new stuff this week or? Yeah, I was going to let Edward, I think Edward wanted to just discuss on some of the new stuff we have out. And I believe it was posted uh, on Facebook. In the Edward. town website. I believe everything was posted to the town website too. On the town website. Okay. Edward, would you like to comment on, on the opening, what they allowed this week and what they're opening on Monday? Yeah, so as of May 18th, uh, now manufacturing, construction, um, some retail businesses have curbside pickup only and places of worship can now um, open with 40% capacity limits and fire rounds retailers and shooting ranges are also open. So all those are open as of right today. And then as of May 25th, which is actually Memorial Day, so maybe they may not be up on May 25th, but probably May 26th, they'll have laboratories, uh, life sciences, offices, but, but most offices will be limited to 25% capacity. So a lot of people will still be working from home. Um, Boston actually is delayed till June, June 1st on that, but the rest of Massachusetts will be May 25th. And car washes, both uh, exterior and self-service only, um, hair salons and barber shops are now open, but by appointment only. You can't just show up. Um, also by pet grooming, also by appointment only. You, know, you cannot just show up. Um, and the third one is a lot of outdoor recreational facilities will now be open, including beaches. So um, now the thing with beaches, although they're open, um, you, do, you will still have to practice social distancing in all of these. But uh, especially with beaches, it's actually 12 feet rather than six feet. Because the idea is if you're, you're, you're sitting 12 feet apart, it still allows someone to walk between you, which is usually what happens in beaches. So if someone's walking between you, you're still all six feet apart. So um, like I said, a lot of things are open up and these are all on a website if you need more information. But the one thing I would like to really stress is just because they're opening up does not mean we can let up on social distancing. They're opening up because we are social distancing. That's what brought the numbers down, the social distancing that we've been doing for this past month. If we let up, they're not gonna open up more things. Like Bob was just telling restaurants, we all want restaurants to open up. And the only way that's gonna happen is if we all just keep doing this social distancing and do even more if we can. Because like I said, that's what's bringing these numbers down and they are coming down and everyone's happy. And the more they come down, the more everything opens up. So we're the ones who are controlling what opens up here. And it's dependent on what we do. So if we're keeping six feet apart and washing our hands and doing everything we're supposed to be doing, then more and more things will start opening up. So I just want to stress that. It's not a time to let up on that. It's just a time to, like I said, you can start going to all these new things that are opening up, which is great, but we still have to keep the social distancing six feet apart. That's all. Hey, can I can I ask you a question? The the hair salons and barbers are those open now, or were they in in the next phase next week? They're May twenty fifth, so they'll yeah, be open on Memorial Day. Yeah. Okay. And have you has there been any talk down the town hall about what they're going to do with Clear Pond this year? If they intend on opening that, or if that's going to stay closed? Well, normally we don't open that till the end of June, so we still have time to discuss it. But. Um, as of right now, no, um, no, there's no plans to open it right now. But like I said, um, hopefully the numbers, like I said, keep coming down and then we can discuss it more. But um, I haven't heard whether there be a determination of when to open it, a date or anything like that. But like I said, normally it wouldn't be open now anyway. So I guess that wasn't on the top priority. Okay, because if, if you're involved in any conversations when they do happen down there, I mean, you know, even if they limit it this year to just town residents and, you know, in past years, they've, we've been letting everybody in and that might be a way to cut the number of people down. I mean, I still don't know about 15 year olds making food and handing it out. Those type of things 
would need some attention paid to them. But, um, you know, it's just one of those things. If there's a safe way to do it, great. But if there's not a safe way to do it, then I guess we, we just lose it for you. Yeah, no, the, people have mentioned that, like maybe the playground. Playgrounds right now are still closed. So um, whereas beaches, they're a little more um, – there's less contact with beaches than there are with playgrounds, whereas a kid's pretty much, it's pretty much tough for a kid not to touch a surface on a playground. So um, something like that might be a little more difficult, but the beach itself, um, like I said, they, they are opening up on May 25th. So, um, you know, that, that's a good sign. Yeah. The problem with that's going to be is they have 15, 16 year old kids, you know, that run it, you know, high school kids and kids going into college maybe. And, um, you know, I know that, unfortunately, in Massachusetts, it's it's our job and your job to enforce all this. I saw today in California that the actual uh, state police and local police are in charge of enforcing these regulations that are out. So a lot of people might not know that in Mass, it's, it's kind of got dumped on the Board of Health. And we have one agent that's uh, now responsible for checking everything else as long as as well as making sure uh, all the other stuff is getting done. So. Um, I don't really like that that happened, but I guess there's not much we can do about it right now. Okay, thank you. Chris, uh, any comment on that? Um, yeah, I was just looking at the town website and um, our last update, there, there's nothing up there as far as the links to all the information for businesses and the guidelines and the posters they can download. I mean, all that information is on mass.gov and in their, their COVID-19 area that they have on that page. Um, I'm sure most businesses have already gone down that road already because they're, in, they're eager to open. So, um, and that stuff's been out since Monday. Um, I was just looking to, uh, they put the numbers, the weekly numbers are out and um, we're at 54 in town. Um, I don't think we went up um, from in the last week. So that's a good sign too for just town basis anyway. Um, the other thing I had too was, um, the, each business is supposed to self-certify that they are, they have a, they have a checklist they've gone through to, um, ensure that they're prepared to be open and ready to be open and have done everything they need to be. Um, I don't know, I hadn't, didn't dig deep into like what the guidelines are and how they report that. Is that straight to the state or is that to us? And it, should we have a spreadsheet and checking in business to business as each phase rolls out? Should we be checking in them or? I don't know if Ed knew more about that. Yeah, so they, they are supposed to self-certify and they're supposed to post it in their place of business um, that they have done all these things. Um, and where we really intervene is when, if a customer goes in and, and sees that, okay, there's not a hand-washing place to clean your hands or there's not, um, the employees aren't social distancing or something like that, um, then they, we would get a complaint and then I would have to go down to check it out. So most of the complaints will come from either the customers or the employees of the business. So for businesses, basically just keep your customers happy, keep your employees happy, and you won't hear from us. I mean, that, that's, that's the idea here. You know, it's, it's supposed to do it. And, and no one wants to be known as a place that's spreading COVID. So it's in your best interest to do what, what, what's up out there, like I said, and, it, like as Bob said, it's tough for us to get to every place. So if, if you guys are doing everything you're supposed to be doing, then then we shouldn't have to bother you at all. Like I said, we want you guys open and we want to keep you open. So we don't want to be going there, finding you or doing anything like that. So just please um, see what the guidelines are and, and, and abide by them and, and everything should go well. And the big okay. thing's masks, right? They should have masks on anytime they're in a place like that? Correct, yes. Yeah. Okay. Anytime you can't socially distance, basically wear a mask. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ed. Um, I don't have any other comments on that. I think Ed touched on everything. Um, I'm with you also, Bob. I mean, I would definitely like to see Clear Pond open um, when, when that discussion does happen. Like you said, even if it is just for Lake residents, I think it's a plus for the town. Um, and I know the pond is well used throughout the year, so. Um, but but I, we can only probably recommend to the selectmen our point, our view. I think I, I don't think it's up to us. It's the selectmen's 
ultimate decision, I believe, to keep the pond open or not. Yeah, I think the parks department and the selectmen make that call. But again, we'd have to watch the bathrooms, we'd have to have, you know, that if they, to open it, you know, we'd have to work with them. If they decide to do it, uh, are we gonna have somebody cleaning the bathrooms every 20 minutes? So the, you know, I'm sure we'd get involved, but ultimate decision to open, I believe is the selectmen and the parks department. Okay. And uh, one, one other question to Edward. What about the gyms? Are they, they still off? I know we've had a lot of uh, uh, issues, but the questions with the gyms opening up, is that still closed? Yes, they are still closed. Um, I have heard rumors they may be in phase three, um, but like I said, nothing's definite yet, but they are not opening now and they will not open on May 25th. Um, that, that's for sure. Um, and then so we'll, we'll have to see on the next round um, what, what's going to be there. But as of right now, we don't know what the next round is. There's a lot of rumors about what's going to open up on the next round. But for right now, we, we don't know. Okay. Thank you. All right. I, I don't have, uh, I have nothing else. Um, Bob, anything else? I'm good. Chris? I'm good. Anything else? Edward, any, any other comment on anything? I'm all set. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. All in favor? Bob Blucci? Aye. Chris aye. Pratt? Aye. Derek Maxim? Aye. Thank you. Hey, thanks, thanks guys.